In this video, I am going to explain and do an example of the total social benefit of trade, sometimes referred to in economics courses as gains from trade. So when we graph the demand curve and the um, supply curve on the same set of axes, the demand curve, of course, is this downsloping blue line, and the supply curve is the upsloping red curve. Where the two curves meet is called the equilibrium point. The equilibrium point is where supply and demand is in equilibrium. Now, what that means is that at the equilibrium price, which would be over here on the uh, vertical axis, at the equilibrium price, the quantity that consumers demand is exactly equal to the quantity that producers are willing to supply. And so everything is in equilibrium. Well, at the equilibrium point, if we take a look at consumer surplus, which we talked about in a previous video, the consumer surplus is represented by this blue area, which is the area below the demand curve, but above the price line, which is now the equilibrium price. The producer surplus is the area above the supply curve, but below the equilibrium price line which is represented by this kind of brownish area. Well, if we combine the consumer surplus with the producer surplus, we have what are told called the social benefits of trade. So remember the consumer surplus is a positive thing for consumers. Consumers are spending less money than they were willing to spend. So they are saving money. Producers are also benefiting at this because the producers are earning more revenue than they were willing to accept. They were willing to produce for less revenue, but they are uh, gaining more revenue. So producer surplus is a positive thing. Consumer surplus is a positive thing. And so this is the total social benefit of trade or sometimes referred to as the gains from trade. All right, let's do an example of determining the equilibrium point and the gains from trade. First of all, the formula that we're going to use for social benefit of trade is this integral. The integral from zero to Q of the demand curve minus the supply curve. Now, the reason for that is if we go back to this graph here, the total gains from trade or social benefit is the total blue area and the brown area. Well, that is simply the area between these two curves. That is all of this area in here between zero and Q. So all we have to do is find the area between two curves. And that's exactly what this formula is. It's the area between the demand curve and the supply curve. From zero to our equilibrium, important, this must be the equilibrium quantity. So let's take a look at this example. Take a moment and read the problem. All right. If we go to Desmos and we graph the demand curve, you're going to get something that looks somewhat like this. And I'm just drawing in the first quadrant. We're only concerned about what it's going to look like in the first quadrant. And then we have the supply curve right here. Again, graphing that in Desmos, you're going to get something that looks kind of like this. And the equilibrium point is where these two graphs cross. So the equilibrium point is this point right here. And Desmos will tell you what that point is. That point on the x-axis is one, and on the y-axis is nine. So in other words, it has the ordered pair uh, one comma nine. So the quantity is one and the price is nine. Okay. So our um, 
we found number one we found the equilibrium we found q q is equal to one that is the equilibrium quantity the equilibrium price just for the heck of it is p equals nine the consumer surplus is this area up here the producer surplus is this area down in here we can find the social benefits of trade by creating the integral from zero to Q, which is one. The top curve then is going to be our demand curve. That's 12 minus three Q squared. The bottom curve is our supply curve, which is four Q plus five. And we're gonna integrate with respect Q. Before we do that, however, we can clean this up a little bit. We've got 12 minus five, which is seven. So we've got seven. Then we have a minus four Q and a minus three Q squared. All right, so there is our integral. We can now integrate this. And so we're going to integrate with respect to Q. So we have seven Q minus four Q squared over two minus three Q cubed over three integrated from zero to one. And of course this cancels with that, that cancels with that. And we get a two here. So my antiderivative is seven Q minus two Q squared minus Q cubed. And that is what we would put into Desmos. And then we're simply going to evaluate Desmos at F of one minus F of zero. And when you do that, that would be simple enough to just do by hand. You don't have to do it by hand. When you put one in all of these, f of one is going to be one, seven times one is seven. One squared is one minus two minus one. So that's going to be seven minus three, which is four. And then putting zero in for all of these, you're going to get zero, so four. So the total gains from trade is four. And that is basically how you do gains from trade problems.